Hey, Jennifer here. Welcome to Crafting in Carrollville. If you're new, I'm so glad you found us. If you're a regular subscriber, you must have tuned in because you know we're doing wood burning today and that's super fun. Okay, we're doing it three separate ways. We're going to jump right into our project and I'll get on here again along the way and let you know what's coming up next and what kind of tools you might want to have on hand if you're going to attempt wood burning. Okay, here we go. We're using that torch paste. We're using a mesh stencil. We have a little silicone squeegee that we're going to spread the paste through that stencil with. And our substrate today is a little wooden piggy that I cut out in my workshop. This was just drop off wood that I had in my workshop. So it didn't cost me anything as far as wood goes to make this. And these mesh stencils will, will work through many projects. If you take good care of them, just wipe them down when you're finished and then rinse them off when you're finished with your entire project. You're gonna see here, I'm gonna take that little silicone squeegee and I'm just gonna squeeze that paste into, this, into the stencil, through the stencil. And as I go, I'm gonna be cleaning off, um, cleaning off my excess paste because again, I say this all the time, we want a light, even coat of our medium here because this is where we can control the burn. After this paste is gone and after you've lifted up the stencil, it's going to be too late to fix it. And so you want to keep it even because we're not actually burning the wood in this method. We are burning that medium. We're burning that scorch paste. So you want to get it even uh, now because if you have raised areas, it's going to bubble and it's going to be um, not a mess, but it's not going to be the outcome that you want. So you can see at the end here, I go and I scrape all that excess off and then I pull the squeegee or I'm sorry, the stencil off. And you're going to see here, um, I did get some paste in an area that I didn't want it. So I just take a wet rag and wipe that away because that would show up in my project. I'm using an open flame to accomplish this method. You could also use a heat gun, but I feel like it would probably take a long time because the heat from the heat gun is, first of all, it's not very directional. So it's a, it's a wide heat and it would be hard to concentrate your burning in the area of your actual image. So also it's not very hot. So, and now mine gets very, very hot but it, you would cause a lot of overburn because of the wide area that it would burn. So I feel like this is probably the best way to accomplish um, the actual burning here. And I like the way it looks. So you can see I'm just using that same stencil three times, different areas of it to accomplish what I'm doing here. I'm making three areas on the pig board using the same stencil. Um, just different images on the stencil. So I'm pushing it through the same way. I'm doing everything the exact same way. I'm just doing it three times. Again, if you want to use a heat gun uh, to make your heat more directional, you could attach a piece of aluminum foil to the front of your heat gun and narrow the opening as you go. So by the time you got to the end of your aluminum foil, it would have to be very narrow and you could concentrate your heat more that way. I think that would probably work. I didn't do that because this just seemed like an easy way. Also, save your money. Do not use Dollar Tree lighters to accomplish this. They just don't produce a big enough flame. Get yourself some decent lighters from the camping section at Walmart. That's where I have found them the cheapest. And I actually had to ask my husband to stop and get me some on the way home from work. And he did because he's a super nice guy. Next, we're doing wood burning. You don't want to miss that. All right, so here I am. I hope that you enjoyed that first method, that's that torch paste. Um, I think it's a great way to make a project in a hurry that you don't want to spend a lot of time on and maybe you want to have several of. Um, the next method we're going to try is with a wood burning tool. This one was sent to me by Plaid to try and so it didn't cost me anything to try it so I thought that was uh, a great idea to just give it a try and tell you all what I think about wood burning in general. Um, the first thing that I tried without any instruction on my own was this. Um, I just wanted to see if I could make anything that looked like a picture. I thought well you know let me just try it. Let me see how it feels in my hand. Let me see if it works like a pencil, you know, a paintbrush. What's what's the thing here? How am I going to make this work? So 
after I did that, I realized, you know, I really need some instruction. Um, this isn't like, just doesn't come naturally to me. It's not necessarily um, something I've ever done before. So I went to Michael's and I picked up a few sample boards. They are just basswood. They're, I think they're four by five. So they're fairly cheap and um, you could practice all day long on these and probably get some pretty worthy pictures out of it. Anyway, so this was what I came up with on my practice board. And so you're going to see as we get into this project that that's what I end up doing on my, on my finished piece. So hang out to the end of the video, see how these things turn out, and then we'll talk about what's happening in Carrollville and at the Barnyard Boutique um, in the next few weeks. Thanks. Like, subscribe, comment, do all the things that are going to help me be successful on YouTube. And hey, I think my husband's going to do a torch project at the end of this video. I'm not sure because it's raining outside in Southwest Florida. But if he is, you you like totally in for a treat. You're going to want an encore. You're going to want to, you know, like you're all going to be crushing on my husband. But he's mine. He's all mine. Uh -huh. Dan's going to think that's hilarious. And he wants, you know, he's got to build his harem. Now, to be fair, he does have a harem, but they're all over 80 years old, and they love him dearly, and he helps them. Anyway, that's my husband. Anyway, um, so now I have the same um, style pig board. I cut this one out of more drop-off wood, and I have printed these graphics out from Creative Fabrica. You all know that's my favorite source for graphics, and I, I'm going to trace it onto my board with graphite paper. Now, if you don't have graphite paper, you could use carbon paper. Or you could just turn your image over and scribble with the flat side of your pencil all over the back of that image and you'll accomplish the same thing. Now, if you'll notice, I am only tracing the outside of those petals. I'm not tracing all those lines in the middle. The fewer pencil marks you give your project, the better, because you're going to have to go over all of those pencil marks um, and that's how you'll erase them at the end of the day. You're going to burn them right out. But you don't need all those inside marks. You're going to be an artist, and you are just going to improvise those as you go. And I know you can do it because this is the foundation of your drawing. It's like the scorch paste that we put on. This is your drawing. And now you're just going to go back in with your heating tool, your, your wood burning tool, and you're going to put those lines in. So it's sort of like you're painting over these lines as you go. So I am being careful about how I trace it. And, you know, I want an accurate picture, but I don't need all those inside lines. Also, I did watch um, another girl on YouTube do actual wood burning her name was Burn Savvy, and I will put her link in the description box because she's actually a professional wood burner. She knows what she's doing. I really don't. I'm just always willing to experiment. Just so you know, this will be my last experiment for a while. I'm going back to my tried and true because I have a show next month that we have to do. But it was fun. It was fun to do some new techniques and learn some new skills. Now, um, I wanted you to know that when I chose this graphic, I chose something that would be forgiving. Like you'll see these petals are not uniform. This is not, um, this is not an image that has uniformity and you need that because we're going to need some forgiveness and grace as we go. Now I've taken my tool and these um, nibs they're called are the attachments that go on the end of your burning tool. And I've chosen a skinny one because I want my lines to be fine and delicate and I haven't sped this portion of the video up until now because I want you to see how I'm pulling the lines away from me. I'm not pushing with my wood burning tool, I am pulling. So there were four different strokes they're called that um, I watched. I, I can't remember her name, it's not coming to me. Um, her channel is called Burn Savvy, and she does a great job. So she actually does portraits, which is what I aspire to do. I really want to learn to do portraits. But anyway, so there were four strokes. There's this stroke where I'm pulling the line towards me. And if you try this, you will 
get to know the feel of the wood that you're working on. You will understand as you go how far you can drag that tool and when you have to start at it from a different direction. And you can see um, I'm just turning my board in the way that I want to pull. I'm not adjusting my tool, I'm adjusting the board. Also, there's a cord to contend with, you can see, so you have to work around that. But this is, I love how this is coming together. It's not difficult, believe me. You already have the picture right there. You've traced it on. So you're not really creating art as much as you're just um, replicating art. But I love this kind of art because... Nobody can say, oh, I can't do art. If you can do this, you've done art. You don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be an accomplished artist to accomplish art. So now you can see I'm coming in with the same thin nib, and I am putting in those strokes. Now, if you can see on the first flower that I did there, I, I lost the footage on that somehow. Um, and, and really, do we need to watch it three times? Probably not. So what you want to do is you want to create that same ombre effect that we talked about a couple videos ago when we painted a sunflower. I'm going to come back in and I'm going to darken those petals around the center of the flower because that is where the petals are naturally darker. And then they lighten as they come out. You can also see that when I make those strokes on the inside of the I'm following the lines of the petals. I'm not just making random strokes that don't make sense. I'm not cross hatching. I'm following the line of the petal. You can see that. And then in the middle here, I'm just going to go and I'm going to make circles all the way around the inside of the flower there. And if you can't make, if you can't use your tool to make a full circle, draw half circles. Draw a half circle, then come back and finish it on the other half. Because it is, it, unless you have um, really smooth wood, it would be hard to make a full circle. Um, and this isn't basswood. This is just common board. I did take. Uh, a 330 sandpaper and I sanded the top of this so basically I polished the top of this board until it was smooth so it actually felt smoother to the touch than the basswood does now you can see I've I've finished the insides of my petals now I'm just coming in and I'm adding those same fine lines to the tops of the petals and these are just, you know, for me, this was totally relaxing. I could just sit in my workshop and draw for hours. Um, I don't have hours into this project, but it certainly looks like I do because this starts to happen really quick. As soon as you get your image drawn onto the board, the rest of it comes together really quickly. I will say that if I do any further wood burning projects. I'm going to treat myself to an adjustable heat wood burning tool because I can see where I would love to know more about this. I would love to actually do a portrait or two this way. And so in order to do a great portrait, you need to do some shading. This particular tool does come with six different nibs and there is a shading nib on there. I haven't even tried that yet, but I feel like without adjustable heat, it all relies on your ability to be quick and um, careful because there's really no erasing in this game here. This is all, you know, it's, you get one chance. But I feel like if you had an adjustable tool, you can adjust the heat and get some good shading. They do actually have a nib that's meant for shading. I think it's called a pancake nib and it's flat and I can see where it would probably get the job done, but I'm still gonna go for that adjustable heat um, wood burning tool. They're not super expensive. This one here, it's made by Plaid and you can buy it at Walmart for, I think it's between 18 and $20. Um, it is like a soldering iron. It's, it's, uh, I mean, it gets really hot and you'll notice that 
as I'm going here, and I don't know if this is supposed to happen, like I've never done this before, the nib bends. And so if you see me off camera, I'm, I'm actually using my needle nose pliers to unbend it. And since it's hot, it lets me do that. So you get like, you get like points as a wood burner if you do this project. And I feel like you should get some points. It's like a blacksmith maybe. And what are the other things? An iron worker, like forging, is that what it's called? I don't know. We're not going to do any of those things. I'm just saying it stops right here. Like I'm done with experimenting until the end of shows. Now, if y'all got ideas that you want to see done and you want to see some experiments, you want to see some new methods, wait till after October and I got you, okay? Actually, make it till after January and then I got you. Now you can see I'm doing a stippling method here. After I've drawn all those circles into the middle of the flower, I go back in with just the very tip of my nib and I stipple all those small little details into the center of the flower. If you're using a sunflower for reference, um, you'll notice on most sunflowers in the way that they're drawn, they have um, the seed pods are closer together as you get closer to the middle of the flower. Now I have one more flower I'm going to burn onto this piggy board and um, you can see that as you go it just it comes together faster you get better at it as you learn the wood surface that you're working on um, as you learn your tool it just comes together. I love the way that we literally started with a piece of wood and a wood burning tool two simple tools and now look, we have a beautiful picture burned on our piggy. Hey, if y'all are interested in those pig boards, um, let me know because I do make those. I make them um, several times a year and they sell like crazy. I've, I've done them a bunch of different ways at this point. This is the first time I've ever uh, wood burned one, but I do stencil them. I paint on them. I, I make them really pretty. And we are going to cover that in a video. We're going to cover how to do some wood cutouts, um, how to get a great pattern, how to enlarge your pattern um, so that you can make nativity scenes for your yard. We're going to do a lot of different things. Um, closer to Christmas time, we'll have some of those things because I don't know about y'all, but I love to give these kinds of things as gifts and um, the closer to get the closer that we get to Christmas, the more I'm going to be thinking about that. Anyway, so now I'm just, I'm doing the leaf that's in there. And, you know, this leaf that you see, you see my reference flower up there in the corner. Um, the veining in that is very delicate. And so we're just using a light touch. We're not pressing into the wood. We're just gliding along the top of the flower there. And now you can see here I am again, just coming in with those lines that come down from the tops of the petals and come out from the bottoms of the petals. I love the delicacy of this piece. And so when you look for your images on Creative Fabrica, and I'm gonna leave you a link for my affiliate uh, down in the description box, I want you to pick yourself a pattern like this. If sunflowers are not your thing, then just type line art into the search bar. And, you know, I typed line art sunflowers. If you like uh, peonies, type line art peonies and they'll come up. But pick yourself a pattern that has some movements and some, you know, these flowers sort of look like they're um, blowing gently in a breeze. You want to pick something that has some forgiveness to it. Like, you wouldn't even notice if you messed up on one of these because there's plenty of wiggle room. If you were drawing the alphabet in a certain font on this pig face and you messed up, you would know it because that requires some uniformity. So until you get your skill level down, don't try anything that's going to aggravate you or intimidate you because at this point, I'm just learning to use this tool. I was hoping to create an image that I loved. I was hoping to do something that I really, I really liked, but that doesn't always happen the first time out. So give yourself a lot of grace and just keep working with it. If you need some encouragement, hey, you know, 
hit me up. I'll tell you, hey, you can do it. I know you can do it. And you know what? You're over here on YouTube because you think you can do it. You're figuring out how to do it. And I'm telling you this. I have found in the world of art, because art is my wheelhouse, I can do it. If somebody else did it and I feel like, you know, yeah, that, that I, I think I have all the skills I can I, I need to do that particular thing. I'm really not afraid to try. And so you shouldn't be either. If crafting is your wheelhouse, if, if you're artistic by nature, hey, try new things because guess what? You're going to be good at it and you're going to love it. Now, am I going to go over to some YouTube channels and figure out how to become an opera singer? No, I'm not. You know why? Because I shouldn't. That's not a thing. All right. Hey, guess what? Here's my husband. He is doing our third wood burning technique. And this is just straight up. We are torching this wood. Like there's no pattern involved. It's just the pattern of the wood grain. We're not using a stencil. We're not, we're just taking a torch to it. And I love this because if you don't have time to stain boards, if you don't have time to watch paint dry, this is a great finish give to a board. You can paint over this. You can do just buy anything with it. Now, listen, my poor husband, I promised you like, you know, the Dan show, but he is, <laughs> he's not feeling well. He's got a, a bad sciatica right now. So he's in a lot of pain and he actually came straight home from work, went to the doctor and then came home in the 112 degree heat index to burn this for me. So he's plenty hot right here. And, uh, you know, and he also wants you to know now, now listen, I could not, not tell you this. He is not left-handed. So this is not his best work. He wants, now listen, it's very important that you acknowledge that because he was very concerned about the fact that he was not giving you his best. Because, you know, he's right-handed, not left-handed. Oh, and also I want you to notice on the shepherd's hook there where the birdhouse is. That's a lizard. That's a gecko. He's doing his little mating ritual there. You see him? I hope he gets a girlfriend real soon. Hey, I hope you love today's project. I hope that you'll give wood burning in, in one of its forms a try. Um... I thought it was super fun. I thought it was very therapeutic to just sit with that tool and actually make a picture out of nothing. Um, artwork always intrigues me that way because you literally start with a few tools and before you know it, you've created an actual piece of art. So I hope you were inspired to do something like that really soon. Um, just to let you know, we have our first show of the season coming up a month from tomorrow. So. Our videos from here on out until September 15th, when we have our, our first show of the season, will just be upcycles, um, thrift store flips. Um, I'm going to show you how I make things in bulk for shows. No matter what it is, I'm going to make 30 of them. So I'm going to show you how I do that. And um, it's not going to be it's not going to be boring. It's going to be something new every week. You're going to love it, especially if you craft for resale. If you craft for resale, you want to pay attention because we're going to have some things that you can do in a quick hurry um, for uh, the least amount of money. So we're talking high profit margin projects that will get you to your first craft show or help you in your craft shows that you've already taken on. So don't forget. Um, to tune in the next probably three weeks we'll have videos that lean into craft shows um, don't forget to like comment subscribe I'm meeting a lot of you I've been able to talk to several of you as we go I really love that I love learning your names learning who you are um, what you like and what you want to see so just comment below tell me which which um, wood burning project you like the most and which one you're going to be willing to try in the next few weeks. Um, don't forget to stick around to the end of the video so you can see how the projects turn out. I'm going to stage them in my home for you so you can see how they look in a home setting. We'll see you next time.